Dave Walter Ray and I meet, we met um, at a regional when I was 14 years old and um, my mom had picked him up at the airport and dropped him off and when she got back to the bowling center she told me that she had just met the man that I was going to marry. Met her in a pro-am that year and then you know met her like every year after that when we go bowl the tournament. You know I watched him bowl and you know he was good looking but you know I'm thinking oh my god this guy's an old man right. Ended up actually asking her on a date when she was about 18 because she was only 14 when I met her. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, she turned me down. <laughs> I'd see her like once every 10 years or 15 years or something like that. And then several years ago, um, she, she got back into bowling and I met her at the senior tournament up in Mooresville. And I said, well, I kind of, knowing her background, she, she's worked for AMF, and I was like, well, I kind of need somebody to help me um, promote myself, I'm not very good at that. So she uh, uh, tried doing that for a few months and we just got a lot closer and at the time, um, me and my ex-wife were not doing so well. and He had told me what had happened and I was like, gosh, I'm really sorry. And he goes, so now I'm at liberty to ask you again, would you care to go out with me? And I didn't hesitate and I said yes. Now we're married. I'm flattered when people say, oh my God, since he's been with you, We've noticed this, you know, he just seems to be more carefree. He seems to be like he's enjoying himself again, you know, and, and as much as I, you know, would love to take credit for that, I mean, he's, he's Walter Ray, you know, he's always been that way. And I'm just here to cheer my husband on and hope that he bowls great. He's changed a lot. And it started, I think, even before Fancy, I think when, uh, when he adopted Rebecca, uh, you saw that change happening to him and but fancy is a uh, super good calming calming uh, person for him um, he's still intense but she is so in his corner so into his bowling so committed to his career and uh, and she gets it she's a smart lady she's a smart lady the love that he has for his daughter is unfathering I mean um, that was part of the deal in us getting married was that I had to leave Charlotte and move to Florida because he did not want to be away from his daughter. He had gone to Dollar Tree to buy me some readers and there was a, a lady in front of him that had, you know, what appeared to be a lot of school supplies, you know, and he asked her, he goes, you know, he goes, I have to ask, are you a teacher? And she's like, yes. And he goes, please tell me that you're not having to pay for this out of your own pocket. And she goes, yeah, I am. Well, my husband calls me later and tells me, I got your two pairs of readers and it cost me $125. You know, he, he has a heart of gold. You know, he's, he's a guy that is an intense competitor, but he's a super caring guy. We've been friends for over 30 years and he's just always been a great human being, always. Um, but this other side of him that's come out over the last few years, um, even, his, even his position at Brunswick, being with us, um, I talk to him about it, and he understands kind of his role with us, and he's so good with our young guys, mentoring them. I see him go over and put his arm around some of the young guys and just speak to them, and, and he really understands that. And, even the guys can feel the change in him over the last few years. And it's, it's a nice thing. It's really a nice thing. I just know what I'm like. I mean, everybody sees you bowl on TV and they kind of think you're this particular way. And um, I'm obviously very intense, but I've also meddled a lot in the last few years. Um, bowling out here on the national tour, I realize that uh, these kids are very, very good. And I just not. I just don't bowl the way I used to. You know, I know my days are numbered bowling out here on the tour, but I've also added doing clinics and stuff and you know, offering lessons and stuff when I'm on the road. So it's, you know, it's something I know that I'm going to be doing more of because uh, obviously this bowling for a living is a little more challenging, um, but I, I still enjoy the competition. And I, I think he's as happy as he's ever been and nothing would change make him happier than to win again. Probably the first time I've ever really noticed him nervous ever was a couple years ago uh, in Reno when he made the show on the shark pattern. And 
uh, he could have actually won his 100th overall title on TV. And I could feel it. I could feel his nerves and a little bit of anxiety. Um, it, was, it was really kind of almost emotional to, to feel him feel all that. Because, you know, a lot of us, we just see him as the greatest bowler ever. And this competitor that always gets it done when he has to have it. And to see him meaning so, it meant so much to him. It was really kind of surreal and just cool. It was really cool to be a part of. You know, I, I want to be the top player, but uh, I've kind of realized that I'm really not the top player, but uh, every once in a while I can throw a few good shots.